Hello everybody in the chess world. So today we're going to see the modern defense and we're, we're going to see a specific line that I want to show you which has a lot of names. I normally like to call it uh, uh, Shirov's modern defense. I'll immediately show you what, what I'm talking about. This thing will begin with e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, knight c3, c6, and now there are different moves, but one of the moves will be one of the main lines is bishop c4 and d6. So this will be like the scheme, the initial scheme for black that we're going to see, like bishop g7, g6, d6, and c6. And well, going just one back, just one move, as I show you in other videos, I'll leave you the link in the description. In here, if white plays f4, well, we always have the option of playing d5. This is one of, one of the things I, I like. So let us go back and well, as I said, Shirov was the strongest player player that I know playing this line, this move order, order. And then, well, for example, in, in the in, in the 90s, he played this a lot against, you know, Polgar, Anand, uh, Anan, the strongest players in the world. So one of the main lines, and the main line in those times was Bishop on C4, what? So, and then the 6. So this will be our initial position. And now we're going to see basically the opening and the general ideas and our model game will be Vichy Anand versus Alexei Shirov. Okay, so, um, well, Anand in here played what, again, was the trendy line against this in those days, which was Queen on F3. I mean, it's quite, quite funny, like immediately hitting on, on F7. So, well, of course, natural response. Well, first of all, of course, since this knight is not coming, coming, coming to F3, well, it will have, yeah, just knight g2. This will be the scheme for white. So e6 is natural response. Uh, well, just protecting f7. And after knight g2, b5, bishop b3, a5. So initially, you can see that Modern is not only the name of the opening, it is really the way of playing, you know, we're on move seven and with black we've just made like basically but pawn moves, except for bishop on g7, and we are threatening to, well, trap this b3 bishop with a4. So logical response is a3, just, you know, given this a2 square for the bishop in case black plays a4. It will be also possible with the same idea for white to play a4, but well, b4 just gaining some pay, some space and a tempo over the knight. I'm not saying this is so great for black, but yeah, a3 is much more flexible, should be better. So a3 main line, bishop a6, exclaim. Um, well, you'll understand this move in, in, in a while because here, for example, well, castles is definitely a move. It's totally playable, but well, Anand played, again, what was considered the most uh, testing move. He played d5. Because, yeah, let us go back a little bit. And white is like, okay, I've, I've developed four pieces. I'm ready to castle. Black is, well, they're, they're black. And instead of going for development, <laughs> castles, and normal chess, they're playing some modern. Well, they want to punish uh, as, you know, black. So they play d5. So, well, the, since the idea is to open up the position... Well, we we never want to play an an e takes d five. This will open the line, you know, f against our our king. So we don't want that. So c takes d five, and after e takes d five, e five. This is the way to keep things closed and also being ambitious. Now you can understand the move bishop on a six, right? Yeah, you we're um, you we're protecting b five. We can play this this line where we're closing it up on, in the center, not going for what white wanted, because now there's no knight takes b5 anymore. If we go back in this position, well, in here, white is actually ready to play d5, and when, you know, and we won't have all this sequence because this will be hanging. So yeah, bishop on e6, of course, well, we have some ideas on this diagonal, mostly if white someday castles and leave this rook here, maybe to play before someday without having this problem of, yeah, the open file, rook takes rook, but you know, bishop a6 makes a lot of sense. So d5, and as I said, pawn takes, pawn takes, and d5. So, and now you, well, you can see that, oh, well, I said that this is also at the same time ambitious for black. Well, all we want to do with black really is to play f5. We want to, you know, gain the space, the most important central squares to control them with pawns, something that, well, white cannot do. They, they ha do have this d5 pawn, but that's it. And really, again, you know, like uh, underdeveloped, but we're ambitious. We just want to play f5 and then see what we will do with our pieces. So 
logical response by Anand, which was, again, theory, is knight on e4. I mean, this is preventing f5, because if we were to play f5 right now, well, white will play knight g5, and yeah, that knight is looking at this big hole in here from which it will attack basically every piece, so this is not playable, and that is why, instead of a fight, Shiro played h6. I mean, natural chess, just controlling g5. Now we are ready to play f5. And, well, it's funny, now there are at least, like, four moves for white. And you'll see how in... In general, White's attempt has have a lot to do with preventing this f5. So before showing you what what Vichy played, let, let us check this this alternative. So one of them will be Queen on g3, and this is preventing f5 because yeah, I mean f5 of course is hanging. Queen takes g6 check, so it doesn't even matter that we are attacking the, the knight. This will lose immediately. However, in this case, well, with Black we will just now switch to development, knight on f6, this is totally fine, if black takes it, well, we'll develop our queen, this is all fine. So, going back, another possibility is, well, the only move for, from these four options for white that doesn't prevent a f5, which will be h4, yeah, they don't, do not prevent f5, in fact, f5 will be a move in here, but, well, after, let us say, knight d2, white's idea is to continue with h5, undermining this pawns in here. And that is why we will simply have knight on e7, just protecting, well, precisely these two squares. So now f5, you know, mainly f5 is protected against any queen takes f5, and that means that after h5 we could just go g5, keep gaining space and making this h4, h5 idea kind of obsolete, right? So, but this is all, as well fine. Now, and very interesting move for me, yeah, in, in yeah, in here, for white, is this move that Anand didn't play, play, but knight 2 to g3. And why is this so interesting? Well, because this move does prevent f5. If we were to play f5 here, even the computers will tell you that, well, now we have overpushed a little bit. White can sacrifice, and probably should, because... Well, this position, even if white gave a piece for two pawns, I mean, this is much better for white. Our king is super, very exposed. Queen g6 is coming. Well, we, we might play knight on, on e7 to prevent that, but e6 is also a hole. You know, they have, well, this bishop, this knight, this queen. This is really unpleasant. This should be much better for, for white. But that is why, in this case, after knight 2 to g3, what we will play will, will be queen to d7. And an interesting detail for me is that, well, you know, okay, first of all, this, this is not a, an easy move to find, unless you know it by theory, because our first thought will be, well, I mean, this knight is asking for some explana explanations, right? Like, where, where is he going? D7 was his ideal square, cannot go to C6, cannot go to A6, so what are we doing? Well, first of all, we're obviously just fostering this F5, you know, which is the main thing that we want to do because we have, yeah, added a force there. But one detail that I like here is that, well, bishop d2 will be the move for white. And here I'll, I'll you know, I'll ask you like the first little question. So we said that with queen d4, d7 we were trying to play f5. So can we play f5 here? What do you think? So possibly you think. Well, the answer is no, we cannot, because there is there are still tactics. If we play f5, again the sacrifice. And after the exchange and queen takes, that's the thing, queen takes, and if we take it, knight takes d6. So th this is unplayable, right? I mean, it was the, the, the big detail. Like, here is, boom. Like, <laughs> we cannot do it. Still, still, this... Not not a reason to to be worried because knowing all of that instead of this mistake f5 well we will play just bishop on c8 we always has, have this resource the bishop was fine on a6 being developed and controlling b5 but now there's no one attacking b5 so we can always yeah come back with the bishop and now f5 is simply inevitable I mean we we could continue the game with let us say castles f5 knight c3 I mean this this the sorry the only retreat for this knight is c3. And well, knight on e7. I mean, and this is this is totally fine. So going back, what did Anand play? Well, Vichy played the fourth possible move. Again, one of those who are attempting attempting to prevent this f5, which is 
G4. G4 is the move that, that an play. I mean, pretty logical, right? You want to prevent F5? Well, just just just, just play G4, you know? <laughs> Quite logical. And not, not right here. So, well, Shiro played knight F6. This is another typical thing, as we saw in the other queen G3 line. If they are successfully preventing F5, well, when they, then we can switch to normal chess development. Knight on F6, and against the logical knight 2 on G3, which which is what, what Bishop played. Well, Shiro just, again, combined development with his insisting on playing F5. Well, the most the easiest and most lo most logical knight 64, and after knight 64, castles development and now the rook is the one yeah just backing up this f5 so anand went queen on h3 which looks like a good move and it probably is but f5 by shirov i mean f5 came anyway and after bishi took it well we said what what was one of the typical resources that we have here bishop on c8 and now stronger than ever because yeah we're on this diagonal on the line of the queen so now comes a really cool part because Anand play knight g3. I think the, the, the commentators were saying that this is the only move. But but now comes the, the cool part because Shirov did not play the most obvious and logical bishop takes on f5. He played rook takes on f5. And yeah, okay, Shirov has this, this style where he kind of really likes uh, sacrificing exchanges. I mean, he really understand the con understands the concept of exchange sacrifice, so he uses it, uh, uses it uh, properly. But it is the right move in here. In fact, Anand did not take the rook. Anand played queen on g2. And after the game, yeah, they were analyzing that if knight takes on f5, well, bishop takes on f5. Here, white should probably choose between queen g3 and queen g2. Let us say queen g2. And queen h4, just the idea is, yeah, finish the development and try to use these really active pieces. And for example, there, this is one little detail that I really wanted to show you because we will see it in other lines. Let us say rook g1, an interesting move. And in here, well, to all of a lot of us, 97 will be automatic, you know, like the logical consequence of developing, you know, finishing development and trying to activate the pieces. But it is true that in here, white might be able to play a4. And, he, well, if we play before, well, now this bishop is free. Okay, this con square is obviously controlled by the queen, but potentially this bishop might be able to come back to the game. That, that is why in here, instead of knight d7 immediately, we'll recommend a4 first. It looks anti-positional because we're kind of fixing our own pawns, you know, after bishop on a2, well, yeah, maybe one day we'll play before, but it kind of looks weird. But now we play knight d7. And again, this really important light score bishop well it, it keeps you know just going against his own pawn so it, it, it's still kind of passive it, it cannot find you know the, the, the freedom in a way so well let us go back i said that after rook takes f5 and then did not take the the, ex the exchange he played queen on g2 shiro played again the concept that i just explained first a4 and bishop on a2 just you know so to prevent possible a4 by white, which whose idea will be really to free this bishop. So first this and this. Well, now again, typical Shiro, always playing, you know, the, sacri the exchange sacrifice, always surprising all of us. He's, he's, a, he's a genius. What, what, what can we say? He played rook and f4. And this is a really interesting move. And well, once again, Anand, and probably correctly, did not take the exchange. Anand plays c3. Okay, here Shirov showed the idea of rook f4. It was not only to lure him to take an exchange. He played rook on h4. And okay, from this particular game, I'll stop analysis here. But I do want to show you what would have happened if Anand had taken the exchange. Because after bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight on e4. Okay, the first move is obvious. Bishop on f5, we develop a piece, we protect on g6. We look at, at, at the knight, you know, kind of attacking it because... Yeah, of this line, let us say queen e7. But, okay, c3 is recommended. Well, we were also like here, right? Bishop takes on b2. Long castles, this is a good detail. Long castles is, well, practically losing. We will go b4. This is too much attack. This is too much attack for black. And if, well, of course, if pawn takes, then a3, continuing the attack. And if white were to insist on closing it up, you know, just to protect the king with this b3. Well, knight on a6, and it, it's kind of over. You know, it's totally winning. So going back, 
C3 probably would have been the move, but now knight on D7 and yeah, well, this position is, is, is totally unclear. So, I mean, a lot of ideas in here, but I really like, you, you see that the really modern character of this position. So, well, now I'm gonna go to another example that to the second game, which will be one that I play, so. Okay, my opponent was white, as usual, no names, as my opponent might not want to be mentioned. And in here, instead of the, well, the announced move against Shira, which was queen on f3, yeah, my opponent just went knight on f3. If you like this line, you'll see this knight on f3, this position, a thousand times. It's super logical, right? Like the normal setup for white. And sometimes you'll see it with bishop on e2, sometimes you'll see it as in here with bishop on c4. So, well, the first curious thing is right, right here. In here I played, in, in, in this game, I played b5. And I say this curious because nowadays I think I will play e6 instead. And well, it is true that e6 gives white an opportunity to prevent b5 by, by playing a4, you know, just cutting this. But well, here there are a lot of options for, for, for black. We, we can see that another day. But the point is that when I played b5, my opponent played bishop b3, which is, well, also if you, if you play this position will be the move that you see more often. Now, I'm not saying that, I won't say that b5 is like a super clearly bad mistake, but there is this move, knight takes b5 here, which is, well, this move has a really simple idea, which is we cannot recapture the knight because <laughs> bishop on d5 and our rook is lost. I mean, this position is lost. In here, we, we cannot play this. This will be lost. But now, look, look at what will happen, because this is a funny sequence. So, we cannot take the pawn. What are we, just a pawn down for nothing on move six? Obviously no, not, not. otherwise we'll be lost. No, black has this resource of g5. Quite funny, right? Because now we're threatening two pieces at the same time. And... White cannot take the pawn because they'll be they will be occupying these d5 squares. Now we could take the, the knight because there is no bishop on d5 trapping the rook. So it's quite funny. Now, because of that, after d5, white does have bishop b3. Saving both pieces. It saves the bishop, and well, we still cannot take this right here because again, bishop takes on d5. We lose this rook, and it is over. So this position, well, I, th I think that the best try for us, for black, will be d takes e4. There is this alternative knight on f6, which has a lot of ideas. We develop a piece, we control this d5 square with the knight, so we are threatening to take b5 knight for, for white, because then there will, there will be no bishop takes e5. But there is e5, and, well, taking the knight, e takes f6, bishop takes f6, well, this is nothing terrible, but that this should this should be better for for white. I don't know if clearly better, but yeah, let us say slight, maybe going on clear advantage for white. So instead, going back, maybe here is better to play d takes e4, and here we we're gonna get like this crazy tactical line because knight g5 hitting on f7. We're, we'll ignore that and take the knight, just take the material, and it is true that. Bishop takes on f7 check, king on f8. Well, it, it doesn't seem quite satisfactory for white. But, of course, white will go knight takes on f7. You're taking the pawn, trapping this rook, and, well, hitting the queen. Hitting the queen is not important because, yeah, we'll answer with queen takes on d4. But here, let us say queen takes, bishop takes, and knight takes. Now, well, you have to be careful. I mean, like, look at the material. Like, we're really down the material and we cannot take this knight here because well white will just take the knight i mean that that that, that will that, that wouldn't be enough at the same time you know white is kind of threatening threatening to go here so the only move is e6 this is the only move that really does trap this knight now we are ready to take here and we've saved all our, of, of our material so logical continuation will be knight takes g6 h takes g6 and well I'm going to stop the analysis of this line here, but um, what can I say? The computer seems to think that this is roughly equal. I mean, our pawn chain is one of the most awful that I've ever seen, really. 
and we are also up and down. We do have two minor pieces for the rook at the same time. So let us say two knights for a rook. So material-wise, this is pretty unclear. So I would understand someone telling me that they don't want, they wouldn't want to play this with black, mainly because of the pawn chain. At the same time, the potential squares for my my pieces are quite interesting and cool. So I will also even understand some, someone telling me that they wouldn't want to play this with white. But okay, after all this craziness, let us go back, knight f3, b5. If you like this line, you can decide for yourself if you will be play b5 here and get into all this chaos or just playing e6. So, But in the game after b5 and bishop b3, I play a5. This is the same as in that uh, Anand versus Shirov line. Again, move, you know, going to the seventh move, just pawn moves, threatening a4, trapping the bishop. Again, the same answer by white, a3. The same thing as before, you know, a4 is possible, but yeah, b4 is. Yeah. It's better to play a3. a3. This, was, this is what my opponent played. So now I went e6, finally, so it's... It looks like a bit of it, a bit of a transposition, maybe a possible transposition. My opponent went castles. Here again, I, I made a move that I wouldn't make uh, today. I, I mean, nowadays I guess I will play bishop on a6. I, I really want to solidify, as I said before, this b5 pawn, so as not to have to be all the time thinking about the d5 break. So, well, knight d7 is what I played, and my opponent played bishop g5. I guess it's a good move. Uh, I think computer pre prefer bishop on f4, just hitting this pawn right here, and yeah, maybe just trying to be stronger on, on the on the dark square. So, well, here I guess knight b6 will be a good answer. You know, just allowing my queen to protect this pawn, and this knight is looking at well, pretty key squares, not bad. So going back, my opponent played bishop on g5. And well, once again, I played <laughs> this 20 years ago, a move that I will not play today. Today, I, I, nowadays, I probably just play knight on e7. But I played queen c7. And well, more than ever, I think that white now should have played d5. Because now it's not only about this weakness. Now, well, this weakness will come with the yeah, winning a tempo against the queen, so it's weird. My opponent did not do that. He played queen d2. Now, D5 was, I'm sure this was a really strong move. Um, I think computer was showing something like knight C5 and after pawn takes, well, we have to defend, uh, protect here, prevent this. So now bishop on A6, knight D4, protecting the pawn is really annoying. And I think rook B8 was, yeah, kind of rook B8 is the way for black to continue, like kind of playing on the edge, but okay, intending before, uh, we're not lost here. There, there might be a clear advantage for white, but okay, we, we can survive a little bit here. It's mm, quite unpleasant anyway. So lucky for me, my opponent did not play d5. He played queen d2. So I was able also to breathe a little bit because now, as it happens in some of the lines in the Shirov Anand's game, I can switch to normal chess. Just okay, development, and now just. No more modern stuff, just knight g on f6, and I want to play short castles, and then see what I'll do. I, I gain some cool space on the queen side, meanwhile, not bad. Rook f1 is what my opponent played, and castles. And I was looking at a particular possibility for white in here a few moves ago. This I remember, because here my opponent started, started thinking a little bit more, and I was like, I'm sure that he's looking at e5. I think he's just calculating e5, like... Looks like a really good move, right? Because the idea will be that, well, to show, you know, vaguely show the idea, let us say that I go away with a knight. I mean, his idea is just to get a bishop on e7. So let us say that I go here, well, bishop on e7, it hits the rook, it hits the pawn, and let us say rook e8, bishop takes e6, winning advantage for black, for white. That will be the idea. So, but still, I'd like you, I'd like to ask you a second question. So, what do you think? Is e5 a good move for white here? Think about that for a little bit and pause the video and think. Well, the answer is no, it is not. And it is what my opponent plays. So, okay, computers were given like instead of this e5, uh, well, most natural move like bishop on h6, trying to exchange bishops. 
I think computer was now giving me an E5, but not to, not as to prevent E5 by white, just because it was a good move, and this should be slightly better for white. But E5 is what my opponent played, and yeah, it, 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 knowing white, this is not a good move. I think that from now on, even computers are giving me equality, and are actually from now on, I start liking black much better. So I was happy here. So, well, as I said before, well, I took the pawn, obviously. And he recaptured, so he was thinking, well, okay, I'm not going to win a pawn on d6, but after knight g4, which is what I played, he just went here thinking, okay, after rook on e8, okay, bishop on d6 doesn't win a pawn, but this is still, I mean, this is such a great position for, for white. This is, I don't know if this is winning, but this is a strateg strategically is a disaster for me. But I guess he missed what I played here, which was not rook e8, just knight g takes on e5. And if you look at the position, this is not even a real exchange sacrifice. I'm going to win more than a minor piece for the rook. So it'll be, well, let us see like that, what, what happened in, in the game. Because first, my opponent did not want to allow me to you know, double pawns on the f3 square. That is why he did not take the, the exchange immediately. Knight takes f3 check, g takes f3, and knight takes f8. Okay, in here... For the exchange, I, I only have one pawn, but these double pawns in here are, are full and his king is open and a little bit fragile, so not not quite good. So that is why, instead of taking the rook, he just went knight takes on e5 to yeah, get the exchange next turn. But yeah, the thing is now I took with the bishop. So now I have two intermediate moves you know, before just recovering the exchange. He took on f8, but I played first intermediate move, bishop takes on h2, check. King on h1 was his answer. Bishop f4 back, the second intermediate move, and the most important one, because this is, this well, maybe this is what he missed in calculation. I mean, of course, I couldn't take the bishop immediately because g3 is trapping the, successfully trapping the bishop, and this wouldn't help me at all. This is still lost. I mean, knight on e4, just kicking out away the queen and mainly controlling this g3 square forever, and... Well, if queen checks, just king g1, this is white's winning. There are no more checks. Well, there is one more queen g4 check, but queen g2, and it's all over. So that is why, of course, in here again, intermediate move, bishop on f4. My opponent went queen d4, and I won knight 6 on f8. He played g3. I won bishop on h6. And after his rook 81, I played bishop on b7. So, yeah. I'll, I'll, as in the other game, I'll stop the analysis here. But I mean, look at this position. I think the computer, general computer analysis here is that the game is roughly equal. Maybe black is kind of preferable. In practical terms, I felt that, that I was already slightly better. I mean, I really like this position, position for black. My pawn chain is amazing. I like this bishop playing on this diagonal, but I, I like also, I like it kind of going back to g7. I mean... All the main possible weakness around my king are totally covered. Also the seventh rank, you know, this knight here is covering any entry. I mean, I really, really, really like this position. And well, I ended up winning the game, like, I don't know, a thousand moves later. Yeah, he was a rough opponent. But okay, as I show you, I, 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 you know, you could see like the main ideas of, of this opening, like in a really professional game as, you know, an Ant versus Shirov, and even in a kind of dumb club game as I played, because, well, and, and it, it really, again, it, it's something that not too many players use. And as I showed you before, I'll leave your links in the description, but I use this modern, you know, against the London system as well. Well, to play the Gorgonitze, as I said before, with this initial G6 bishop on G7 that I love so much, I can always speculate, you know, maybe I'll play Perts, maybe I'll play double fianchero, maybe I'll play Robash, maybe I'll play King Sindian, you know, I can always do different stuff, maybe I'll play this Sheroff's Motor, maybe a Gorgonitze, so flexibility is one of the best things about this modern opening starting with g6 and bishop on g7 so thanks a lot for watching as usual you know like remember to like comment share subscribe and well i will see you next time